Here is a collection of rugs that I've been developing for the last uh, three years. They are all crafted out of uh, used stuffed animals. Uh, of course, it's a sustainable approach to animal skin rugs. Uh, all these teddy bears have been used. A lot of the work um, that I do it has to do with sustainability and to the relationship uh, that we have with our atmosphere, with our world, and with our materials. And this is another project I was commissioned last year during our Basel. Um, two billboards and 35 bus shelters around Miami. The material that was installed is um, a material that reflects light, so it's actually reflecting what, what the state looks like. Uh, one of the team members of Culture Park is Anthony Spinello, who's sitting in the audience. Uh, we've worked together for eight years. He uh, started a gallery eight years ago here in Miami, and his gallery is quite sustainable as well in the sense that he approaches space. The slide we were seeing was an exhibition he did at an abandoned school. Culture Park will take place in an abandoned amusement park. That's what brought us together, uh, together with two other collaborators who started a museum in an abandoned thrift store 10 years ago. So the four of us got a grant from Art Matters, which is an organization in New York, to start our research uh, in this location. This is uh, the amusement park. It's in a huge forest which is now a Soviet memorial, which leaves the land in a very particular situation because nothing can be built or developed in there. Um, the amusement park has all the rides inside. Uh, everything was is kind of intact in a sort of disappearance way, uh, a little bit run down and demolished, uh, but a huge garden is growing. And the site was built in 1969 by the DDR. It was the only amusement park in the Eastern Bloc. In, with, the wall of, with the fall of the wall, the park became privately owned. And in 2001, the park finally closed its doors to the public because of this situation of being in the middle of the forest, not having a parking lot, and the idea of leisure, and I guess the way that we get entertained uh, I've shifted a little bit. In Berlin, the situation with the public space is quite different. Um, something like um, very sensorial and attractive and noisy doesn't quite work. People are approaching park and public spaces in another way. The park yet still functions like an amusement park, but it has a fence. There's approximately 70 people jumping this park to see what's happening in there. These are shots of what the park looks like now. And from now on, you're just going to be seeing slides of what the park, and I'm going to explain what Culture Park is, or what Culture Park is proposing. During the whole month of June, um, there are going to be three different stages, a creative camp, an exchange program, and a public event, and finally, a proposal publication. In the creative camp, which is the first three weeks of June, we are inviting 25 Berlin-based collaboratives, all different disciplines, architects, musicians, um, Berlin initiatives that are proposing developments, urban design, etc. So they're all coming together, organizing a think tank together with Berlin leaders, Trepto community, stakeholders, etc. The park is going to function like their studio. They're going to be creating workshops, uh, hosting dinners, lectures, there's going to be an online radio, it's all sorts of different activities, collecting research and investigating what this site was and how, what could it possibly be. Uh, the outcome of this will be a publication that we printed and somehow a master plan for what the future of this dance could be. Some of these projects have a very community approach. Uh, where they will be engaging with schools that are around, um, gardens, they're going to be uh, creating a garden out of the park. This, for example, right, will become an instrument. Visitors will be invited to play the actual park as if it was an instrument, as well as an orchestra will be displaced inside the park. So for the first three weeks, the project is sort of hosting a research and an investigation approaching the community and different uh, disciplines, and then finally it will open to the public so that the public can also be uh, included in this sort of investigation and research. Um, the park will also share this uh, with the cities where we come from, and this is where the creative exchange comes. Um, 
we were wondering how we could include Miami if we're working on a park in Berlin, yet we live in Miami, and that feels somehow off in our responsibility as citizens of this city. So we're actually bringing each of us from the city where we're based different uh, students, groups. Uh, we are bringing the New World School of Visual Arts uh, to join us in this creative investigation. They're going to be, of course, part of all this research, engaging with these creatives and bringing back all this knowledge um, and hopefully bring it back to our city. There's a group from Washington DC coming along as well, as well as students from different universities in Europe and um, putting them all together and working collaboratively and maybe even investigating how different, how an amusement park of the future could possibly be in a different way instead of a sensory attack. Uh, this amusement park is still as magical but it's quiet and it's still as enchanting, but it's still, um, there's not really movement. Now, some of these projects, this train still works, and it travels around the perimeter of the park, and it will travel around the perimeter of the park during June. Um, this movie, Hannah, if you have seen it, that's exactly the backdrop. So this park has actually been used for creative endeavors. Um, the city of Berlin is quite interested in this project, especially because it has culture involved, and other than building a giant building in the middle of the forest, something that engages communities seems appropriate. Thank you. <laughs>